Ah, yes, here we go. Under sunny skies, I say a very good Monday morning to you on this, the sixth day of May 2019. Hey, everybody. I'm George Grant, and thank you very much for joining us uh, for today's edition of Good Day Grenada. As we launch into a brand new week, I certainly hope you have the degree of optimism that I do about this week. You know, we can only hope that things keep getting better and better in our quest for good governance in this country. And I hope that your hearts will be at peace. Friends, let's take a look at the rundown, see what's cooking here over the next uh, hour or so this morning. We, uh, boy, we have a long, 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 long agenda this morning. And uh, already uh, I see that a uh, friend out there in uh, Zurich, Switzerland, has joined us. Good morning to you, Chester. God's blessings, my friend. I hope you're uh, well on the way to a full recovery. Hope to talk to you soon. This morning, we're going to start by taking a look at the handling of trash in Singapore. Very interesting little piece. Came across that uh, sometime last week and decided, hey, let's see, you know, with, with all the garbage that's being just dumped all over the place here in the Spice Isle, pure Grenada, I thought we should share this with you and you'll see how they do it in Singapore. We're also going to take a look at developing countries that are falling into China's grip. Huh? Big topic, big topic over the last few months. Uh, a lot of people are wondering uh, what the eventual outcome is going to be for those of us teeny weeny little islands here that seem so anxious to get funds, funds, funds. You know, well, there's a reminder that nothing in life is for free. And looks like uh, many countries have already learned the hard way and who knows we may be next yes sir we do have the national report for you this morning and in addition to that i'm going to bring you a couple of excerpts from uh, the program that we did yesterday there's a grenadian in new york who continues to aid this country Guy goes around knocking on doors and, uh, you know, trying to get people to uh, come up with little things that he can send back to his homeland. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of people like that out there, eh? There are a lot of them. But uh, it's sometimes difficult, as uh, you're going to find out this morning. Those of you who watched the program yesterday already are aware of some of those uh, difficulties that they face. But many of you have continued to be persistent, and we're counting on you. Um, yeah, I know that there are not a lot of people out there waving your flag, but there are some of us who are, because we realize the effort that you're making. And finally this morning, uh, yeah, we're going to take another look at another poor grade for Grenada's health care system. I don't know. I don't know. It just uh, seems to be going from bad to worse. Yet, yet, I continue to be optimistic. I do believe that things are going to change. And uh, we're going to see our way through these very, very difficult times. So, pilgrims, let's uh, cue up the first piece here. Uh, yeah, there it is. And... Um, for a tiny island, we find ourselves burdened with major waste disposal issues. And we're not alone. The problem here seems to be a lack of creativity when it comes to disposing of solid waste. Maybe you can add willpower to that. Our financial resources may not permit us to adopt the methods you're about to see in the following video. But the next few minutes will show you how creativity goes a long way in ridding Singapore of its waste. Take a look at this. 500 years. 
500 years is the number of years it takes this thing to disappear. This is a snack bag. You open it, you eat the chips in a minute and throw the plastic bag in trash. In most countries, this trash sits for hundreds of years waiting to decompose in a landfill. But in a small Asian country, they figured out a way how to make trash disappear in one day. For the first time ever, I want to show you the full, hidden, exciting journey of trash in Singapore. Singapore is a tiny country. It's this big and it has no space for trash. So here is how they got rid of it. First, they collect the entire country's trash from here, here, and here and drive it to this big building to burn it. Inside this incineration plant, there is a fire that burns 24 hours, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And this 1000 Celsius degrees fire eats the trash away and generates heat and energy to light up thousands of homes. From our installation process, we harness the heat to generate electricity. But here's the crazy part. This fire behind me doesn't even hurt the environment. When you burn trash, it generates toxic smoke like this one. And these guys filter out the smoke in a complicated process to make it so clean, cleaner than the air around you. So this chimney at an incineration plant emits clean air. The air come out from the chimney is smaller than one micron, which is very, very clean. By now, 90% of the trash disappears in a couple of hours and the remaining 10% turns to ash. This ash, just like the smoke, is toxic. They take it and ship it far away to a man-made island where they dump all of it into a special water that doesn't touch the ocean water. And there, ash stays underwater forever hidden from everyone. This process is so clean, the corals are still alive, the jungles are still green, and the animals are still around at that island. In other words, Singapore collects trash, burns it, creates electricity, filters out the smoke, hides the ashes underwater, and makes this trash bag disappear in one day instead of 500 years. If every country could handle your trash and mine the same way Singapore does, then we would have a much cleaner world. A world where this snack bag doesn't exist for more than one day. See you next week. You know, this is an incredible youngster. He does a lot of videos of that nature, that type, and I uh, really have great admiration for him. He gets, he gets you thinking. As I mentioned at the top of the program, you know, we may not have the resources that uh, the people out there in Singapore have, but um, there are so many little things that we can do to keep our environment healthy. Actually, I did a piece about uh, Mount Hartman a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things that was said in that piece is that rather than cleaning up the garbage, how about not dumping it? in the first place, huh? So uh, keep that in mind. Before, I, the next piece I'm gonna do is also done by that uh, youngster and you'll see what I mean about uh, his creativity and uh, his, his goal to educate, which is what we're all about here, trying to educate our people, open up our minds, you know, to new things, new ways of thinking, adopting a new mindset, huh? So uh, his second piece is coming up in just a wee bit. But first, I want to say good morning to the folks out there. We've already said good morning to Chester, and I see that Ryan is uh, there as well, and uh, so is John. And Benedict Cador is describing today as Marvelous Monday. Thank you, Benedict. It is going to be a marvelous day. Uh, and Ryan, by the way, says he just got back from riding his bicycles. Bicycles? 
you ride more than one bicycle at a time, right? Huh? Um, and uh, Peter is saying good morning from Brooklyn this morning. John says, re-plastic waste. A cafe in the Philippines now uses straws made out of coconut leaves to cut plastic waste. Hey, John, simple but creative. Creative but simple. If we could adopt little things like that, it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, if <laughs> I, you know what a sweet tea is? I bought a sweet tea a couple of days ago. Actually, it was a chocolate, a little chocolate, and a little wrapper. And I uh, put the chocolate in my mouth, mmm, yummy, yummy, yummy. And that little piece of paper, where does it go? Into my pocket. Until I find the nearest dustbin. And then I drop that in there. A lot of people would go, hmm, therein lies the problem. Let let people tell you about how you know they jump, they dump their uh, food containers. People go into one of the fast food restaurants and you you buy a lunch or whatever. You eat it in your car and then chung, out the window it goes. Hmm? Please buy a roti, tum 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 tum, and then chung, out the window. That's where the problem lies, folks. That's where the problem lies. Um, let's see here. Uh, Kipling is saying good morning and uh, sending his blessings. And uh, Margaret says she hopes that we're all well. So far, Mags, we're doing pretty darn good. Good to see you. John says in Sweden, many major cities have incinerators that create steam and that drive generators and hot water for the whole city. Yeah, yeah. Creativity again. Ashton Fletcher is saying good morning. Just checking in from Louisville, Kentucky, and wishing everyone a productive week. Thank you, Ashton. Bernadette, uh, sorry, Bern <laughs> Bernard Gilbert is saying good morning. And Ryan says, love Singapore, eco-friendly recycling of waste. Kipling says, I've been wondering, we need oxygen to service the trees, produce Oh, Kipling, I'm trying, I'm trying. I have been wondering, we need oxygen to service the trees, produce it from carbon dioxide. Now, if we get rid of all the things that cause carbon dioxide, where will our oxygen be coming from? I need to be enlightened on that. Forgive me if you think I'm dumb. Carla Clement says, Good morning, Uncle George and all the viewing audience. That's where it should be in your pocket or bag or the proper receptacle. Yes, Carla. I hope that uh, more people out there would follow that. Just don't throw it. I don't care how big or how small it is. Just don't go dumping stuff all over the place. Linky, hello, Lincoln, saying good day, and uh, it's all about awareness, he says. Educate the people about the environment, and changes will eventually occur. Much love to everyone. That's what we're trying to do, Linky. We are trying. And you know what? We often talk about the people who are not listening. But I'll tell you, there are people who are listening, and they do care about the environment and the need to protect it. Ryan says, eco-friendly should be on every Grenada folks minds. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, let's move on to the next little piece here. The past year has shown the world just how dependent developing countries have become on China for relatively easy loans, failing to recognize the indebtedness which accompanies China's apparent generosity. The following video simplifies, in layman's terms, just what is happening to these money-hungry countries. Again, a piece from Nas Daily. Check this out. Hi! What you see here is $10,000 on the table. 
You can take this money as a loan, but I will charge you a little bit of interest rate. Like most people, you take the money and you go buy a nice car. But in 10 years, it's time to pay me back. And because of interest rates, now you owe me $20,000 and not 10. You will say, I don't have money to give you. And if you don't, I take your car and a piece of your house. This is how debt works. And after three years of traveling the world, I noticed that this is exactly what China is doing. For example, take the small island nation of Sri Lanka. This developing country needs money and China has a lot of it. So Sri Lanka took billions of dollars in Chinese loans. It was easy money just there to be taken. And with that, they built skyscrapers, highways, airports, and shipping ports. The country grew and prospered. But few years later, this easy money came with interest rates, and Sri Lanka was so much in debt that it couldn't pay back China its money. And the only way out was to give China control of what they had built. In other words, Sri Lanka lost a piece of its home to China because of debt. This is the Chinese money trap. And it's a real thing I saw all over the world. In Papua New Guinea, I saw $2 billion in loans given by the Chinese to build skyscrapers, infrastructures, and ports. But there is no way this remote developing country can pay it back or its interest rate. And the only way out is to give China control of the country. In the Maldives, Pakistan, Malaysia, Laos, Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Egypt, Kenya, and South Africa, the same thing is happening, and many countries are struggling to pay back Chinese loans. If you look closely, all these infrastructure projects like highways, ports, and bridges connect to China through the sea or through the land to form something far bigger, far more powerful than just a bridge. A new Silk Road. The world is already made by China and I think slowly it will be owned by China. Don't get me wrong, building bridges, ports, highways and airports is a great thing for the people and the country. But they come at a very high cost. And when these countries can't pay back the loans, these countries will lose their home. One thing my parents had taught me is that there's no such thing as a free lunch or a free ride. So if we're not careful with our money or other people's money, then we better start learning Chinese. Xia Chou Xian. Okay, there you have it. Did you see did you see one of the graphics they flashed on the screen there? The world will soon be owned by China. Food for thought, food for thought. There is no such thing as a free lunch. Remember that. Mom and Dad taught me that as a little boy growing up. All right, pilgrims, let's see here now. Where are we? It's a little gone past 19 minutes after the hour on this Monday morning. And uh, we're going to take our first little break right now. And uh, then we'll come back with... The National Report. Are you equipped to take a closer look behind the numbers? The Caribbean Institute of Forensic Accounting can help you build your professional skills to audit and investigate fraud, waste, and abuse. Through the Forensic Certified Public Accountants FCPA program, you gain qualification to conduct forensic audits and investigations globally, earn international recognition and designation as a Forensic Certified Public Accountant from the Forensic CPA Society of the USA. Certificate courses run May to November 2019 in Grenada at the Grenada National Stadium. To register, contact us at info at cfa-edu.com or 868-224-3478. My name is Jennifer James and I've been making confectionaries for the past seven years. Growing up as a little girl, I always wanted to make these little things. Forge, sugar cake, tamarind ball, 
these little things. I read something actually and it said that tambran itself is very good because it eliminates fat from the liver. You get the macho tambran and you crack it, you shell it out. I would add a little baking soda, some spices. I would leave it to rest probably for about two hours and then add my sugar and just start kneading. I usually knead it hard enough so that I can roll it. When I finish roll it, I will paste it with the actual white or brown sugar. And you have a nice tamarind ball. I have been providing food fair with tamarind ball about six years now. I started producing tamarind ball to sell for the school children. I thought I could advance somewhere. So I went to Food Fair and I asked one of the sales persons there to if they would be interested in selling my time and more. And um, she told me yes. She told me I'm to bring 20 packets to start with. It was really a joy for me because I wanted to extend on my little business. My name is Jennifer James and I work with the Food Fair to provide you with tamarind balls. I'm always on the move. Training, traveling, competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Corporate Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. All right, folks, uh, just before we move on to the national report, I want to get caught up here on uh, social media. Let's see here. Spice Babes Duncan has checked in and is thanking God for another beautiful day. Also sending blessings to you folks. John says, and guess what? That's exactly what we're doing here. He's referring to that piece uh, with the uh, Chinese loans. Um, yeah, we're just gobbling up, gobbling up, gobbling up loans. And <laughs> uh, how are we going to repay? Hmm? Ask yourself that question. Um, SD Notap says, good morning. It is not just China. The World Bank does the same thing. Good to hear you bringing these subjects to the fore, George. Thank you very much, SD. Um, we're trying. We're trying. Uh, Sharon Roberts says... Good day, everyone. See what the Chinese did in St. Lucia last week? Yeah, Sharon, I saw that video. Kind of scary, isn't it? I saw that. Um, Bernard Gilbert says, Grenada is heading down that slope with the Chinese. Yeah. Borrowing, borrowing, borrowing. Then you stick your hand in your pocket. You got nothing to repay with. Huh. Ah, Spice Babes Duncan says, George, I share similar sentiments. These Chinese are very clever people. Yeah. Okay, folks, and I can assure you that they're listening to us. They're listening to us. Let's now turn to uh, Friday's edition, and I want you to bear that in mind, Friday's edition of the National Report. Regional airline LIAD devises formula as strategy to bolster non-lucrative flights. We'll have details to this story and more in the National Report. With the details to the news for Friday, May 3rd, I am Rakesha St. Louis. 
Regional airline Liat has devised a formula called the Minimum Revenue Guarantee, or the MRG, which seeks to ensure that every Liat flight that takes off must expect break-even revenue. It is a strategy to address the challenges faced on non-lucrative flights. Tourism Minister Dr. Clarice Mudas Cohen explained the rationale behind the formula during a meeting of the House of Representatives on Friday on the heels of a meeting she attended in Antigua Tuesday to discuss the future of the regional airline. The formula recommends that the flights that do not yield a certain amount and what they have done is calculate the routes and what is the break-even number of seats that must be occupied. And sometimes you go on a layout and the plane is full or pretty full. Sometimes you go and you can count the number of heads on the layout flight. And so we have to ask ourselves, you know, how can layout survive with the ups and the downs? You go on a jet blue from New York to Grenada and it is full. And there's a demand now for more flights from New York to Grenada. There is even a demand for, for Canada, even though Air Canada is doing daily flights. There is a demand for that a certain, a, a during certain periods. So imagine for Liat, where the demand may not be so high, how can they compete with other airlines? Not compete in terms of where they travel to, the routes, but compete in terms of generating income. And so that formula was presented to us that when above a certain threshold, governments do not have to pay anything. But below that, if they do not reach break even, governments have to contribute. The tourism minister says while they have asked the airline to revisit the formula, they are aware that Liat must take a business like approach to continue to service 100,000 people per year. So, Mr. Fika, they're going to revisit the formula. But we also said that when we exceed and you make profit, we have to look at how we can offset a bit what government needs to pay for the not productive flights and um, give us some credit for that. So hopefully we will not have to pay as much. But we in the Ministry of Tourism, we are aware that we must do more marketing. We must create more incentives for people to visit Grenada so that our flights are always above the break even level. And we already have started to have meetings. We'll be having a number of consultations um, in the next few weeks. Uh, on Tuesday, when I went to Antigua, there was a consultation with the private sector. And I am pleased to say that there's a growing PPP relationship between the government entities and the private sector. And that has augured well. They have come up with excellent suggestions. They are willing to help us execute those and implement those suggestions. But very importantly, several of them have come up with the finances to assist, to assist in, in the financing of those things. During a recent meeting in St. Kitts, CARICOM leaders were advised that Liat can go down based on its current situation. In response, Prime Minister Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell had said, and I quote, if Liat goes down, it is going to take some time for a new airline to emerge. It will damage our economy, our country, and create tremendous hardship for our people. So it is not in our interest to let it go down. And given that we have seen a trend of change in recent months, we have agreed that we will contribute towards the cash injection that the company needs, unquote. Dr. Modest Cohen told the meeting of the House that Grenada injected $1.3 million into the survival of the airline, and this was well justified. The number of passengers for arriving from through Liat to Grenada in 2018 was 44,333 persons. 44,000 people, 44,333 persons arrived. And between arrivals and departure, Liat accounted for 91,537 persons. So $1.3 million, when you look at 91 million, the excess of 91 million persons, $1.3 million is well justified. 44,000 people coming to our country generate income. Many of them as tourists. Many of them would be people from the diaspora coming back to their country. But the majority come as tourists, and they do spend money, and they are important to the economy 
of this country. These people who visit our country by themselves could generate the $1.3 million, and much, much more than that. So I think it's important. Sometimes people make utterances. Why spend that money? But Mr. Speaker, when the threat was made that Liat would shut down, I believe all of us understood the importance of keeping Liat afloat. Minister Modas Kerwin is happy that talk which surfaced a few weeks ago that Liat will shut down will not become a reality. She hopes that progressively political interference will be removed from the management of Liat, which was given a mandate during a meeting she attended in Antigua on Tuesday that it must begin operating as a business. Last week, two members of Liat's management team were in Grenada to meet with the airlift committee on the way forward for the airline. Continuing with the news, Grenada's Prime Minister and lead head for science and technology in the CARICOM quasi-cabinet, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, wants to see greater collaboration among regional countries in the area of technology. Speaking at the Caribbean Internet Governance Forum organized by the Caribbean Telecommunications Union, the, T, the CTU, in Trinidad and Tobago this week, Dr. Mitchell noted that insufficient progress has been made towards the creation of the CARICOM single ICT space. Dr. Mitchell called for the elimination of silos to create a seamless digital space in the region. Even in our own countries, within different divisions, we operate in silos in our own country. We talk about IT as a service, but every little department on its own little IT, as if it's an ego thing, instead of recognizing it is about service to the people of our country. We have to be educating and fighting with our own citizens to let them understand it's not about that ego, it's about the service that we deliver and the necessity to integrate everything we do. My dear sisters and brothers, therefore, the elimination of silos results in greater efficiency and effectiveness in the use of our scarce human and and financial resources. In this technological age, there is absolutely no justification for replicating and duplicating efforts in each of our Caribbean islands and expending already scarce resources. The Prime Minister added that we must be prepared to work together to pull our limited human and financial resources to achieve our development objectives. We cannot continue to allow our failure to collaborate to result in stagnation and lost opportunities for advancement. We must take charge of our own development. Colleagues, what I've seen here, I've said it also at heads meeting, and I will say it again, and continue to say it until the end of my period of service. My dear sisters and brothers, therefore, the concept of pooling resources is not new. And today, as most countries face immense pressures on national budgets, declining economic performance, rising public debt, we must optimize the use of financial and human capital through collaboration and pooling. There is no other way. The Prime Minister also cited technology as a critical pillar in regional integration. The Union's Caribbean Internet Governance Forum was held under the theme, Digital Transformation, Do It. Sisters and brothers, the future of CARICOM and the CARICOM single market and economy rest in our hands. We owe it to our children and our grandchildren. Technology, if appropriately used, provide us with the means to fulfill our integration aspirations, which is, of course, crucial. We can still achieve all the benefits of the CARICOM single ICT space and the CSME, but we must move with much more purpose and commitment. We must view investments in technology as the means by which we will improve the lives of the Caribbean citizens. It is a vehicle that ensures that none of our people will be left behind. In other words, this idea of rethinking that if we do it right in my country, 
and the others, and we are ahead, then we look good. It doesn't work so. If we do it here, and the next one is left, we also suffer the consequences. The only real benefit is then all of us, all citizens, are in fact on this platform. This is the National Report. More news after the break. The eyes of the world are on us more than ever. So, so, so let's take it to them. Saturday, May 4th, the Spice Mask Cooperation launches Spice Mask 2019. The Caribbean's biggest, biggest, biggest summer biggest. festival. This year's launch starts with a roadshow from Arisa Copper to the National Stadium. From 3 p.m., bring out your last year's costume and join the parade. It's one big experience with a display of fancy masks, traditional masks, mocha jumbi, and the most envied jab jab. The official opening is at the National Stadium, featuring your favorite soca artists and DJs, Calypso Monarch, Still Pan Champion, and presentations of the 2019 Carnival Queen contestants, plus, plus displays plus, plus. of 2019 costumes, SMC show tickets, and other attractions to be won. Saturday, May 4th, the National Stadium, the launch of Spice Mask 2019. Bring out the entire family. Log on to SpiceMaskGrenada.com for more. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education says it has had a successful series of meetings with Mr. Glenroy Cumberbatch, the registrar of CXC, who was in Grenada for two days, meeting with parents, teachers, and educators. Some of the burning issues were discussed, and according to Education Minister Honorable Emmeline Peer, they received positive feedback, which highlighted the need for an effective flow of information. During a meeting of the House of Representatives on Friday, Minister Pierce said it was made clear during the session with teachers that SBAs are not meant to be a final exam, but an avenue to give students all possible opportunities to develop their skills. In this vein, she says there is need for greater supervision of students' work. We ought to be doing far more supervision and monitoring of what is happening in our classroom. Because if a child is starting an SBA, Two weeks before the deadline, something is fundamentally wrong somewhere. And so it means that we have to take responsibility, we have to accept responsibility, and it cannot be business as usual as it relates to our officers who are supposed to be monitoring what is happening in our classroom. Mr. Speaker, as, as I'm saying this at this time, CXC should be meeting with officials at the Ministry of Education. So we're not just doing teachers, parents, or ministry officials must also hear the message. And they must also be reminded of what their role is in this process. That story just ended the national report for today, Friday, May 3rd, recapping the top story. Regional airline LIA devises formula as strategy to bolster non-lucrative flights. On behalf of everyone here at the Government Information Service who made this newscast possible, I am Rakesha St. Louis saying thank you for joining us. Until next time. All right, there you have it. That was Friday's edition of the National Report. Now, just before I launch into your comments about the National Report, um, I want to go back a little bit here to a couple of comments that came in while we were running the pieces about uh, uh, China and uh, keeping the environment healthy. 
Um, Irvin Samuel said here, Good morning, George. I must commend you on your great effort to diffuse, properly inform, and educate not only the citizens of our beautiful island, but those worldwide who are viewing your program. Wishing you God's continuous blessings. Irvin, thank you very much. I need those blessings. Believe me, it ain't easy. So one the Fabio Sam says, Good morning, George. That is why I always share your problem. These are the conversations we need to have. You know, so Wandy, I, I enjoy a good laugh from time to time. But these are the issues that really irk me. And uh, I keep bringing them up because I'm hoping that people become more sensitive to what's happening and have a change in mindset. Um, now, let's get to the national report. Peter Bishop says, so take out all of those high government taxes. It's that simple, Minister. <laughs> oh yeah, Peter, if only their ears were open. And you're not the only person, as you're about to see and hear, you're not the only person who feels that way. As I move on here, um, John Kerikou says, no more news of Richard Branson's interest yet. Hopefully this, uh, this week we'll hear some more. I'm keep keeping my pinkies crossed. Told you. Eternal optimist. Margaret Francis says, Everyone recognizes the importance of LIAD for regional travel. But at the same time, we can't continue with business as usual. There has to be a complete overhaul. The taxes have to be lessened. Competent management with knowledge of the industry is needed. And for God's sake, get rid of the politicians. Margaret, I found it so interesting while watching that uh, newscast a little while ago that there was uh, a call for the removal by the minister the removal of political interference. You heard that? Margaret, how about removing the taxes which form a huge chunk of the price that you pay for every ticket to travel on that carrier? Have you noticed how precious little is ever said about removing the taxes. We hear all sorts of diversionary measures, but very little, if anything, about removing the taxes. These folks really seem to believe that we aren't watching. They really seem to believe that. Look at it. Managements are elected, selected, appointed to manage companies and come up with solutions to developmental challenges which the company is likely to face. So too, our governments were elected and are paid to come up with solutions to the developmental challenges we're facing with things such as LIAT. In the case of governments, excuse me, in the case of corporations, companies, what do you do if your management's not performing? How come? How come that hasn't been done in the case of governments. How come? Hmm? Let me get back here. Uh, Irvin says, the problem isn't primarily Liat's routing formula, but the regional government taxation policies on travel tickets, landing fees, etc. How will Liat woo more commuters when ticket tax and landing tax are making travel tickets cost high and unattractive to commuters? Good question, sir. Good question. We cannot 
overmilk the cow and kill it. Huh? Yeah. Kipling Francis says, people have lost all trust and confidence in these so-called honorables. Even when they speak the truth, it's hard to believe them. How did we come to that? Kipling? <laughs> I don't know, Kippy. I don't know. Peter Bishop then moves on to say here, lead prime minister on ITC in CARICOM, but yet internet services in Kariku are at its worst. Cannot even get a good hookup on Good Day Grenada from Kariku on Monday. Go figure. Just a set of old talk. Peter, there's a word to describe that. Rhetoric. Rhetoric. For Troy Adams is saying good morning. Uh, Donna Joseph says, Good day, George. I saw in one of the local newspapers that Mr. Chester Simons, son of the, s son of the soy living in Switzerland, has sent a letter addressed to Minister Kerwin that he would no longer stretch out his organization's helping hand in the form of health care donations of much need, not much needed supplies, even vehicles, because of his bad or maltreatment at the hands of the very said government and people that he has helped on countless occasions. And now he's being welcomed by some of the African nations. Who welcome his contribution. What a shame and disgrace on our government. Yeah, you know something, uh, Donna? Uh, I don't know if anybody else did, but I certainly did publish that letter from Chester Simon. And over the years, I've worked very closely with Chester. I know where his heart lies. I know how much he's done. I also know how much more he'd like to do. But the man has been totally frustrated. Totally. And you know what? In just a little while, we're going to be running a piece here with John Crow Alexander, who was on the program yesterday. You'll hear more about that. Fitzroy Adams says, I've been hearing this Prime Minister saying, my dear brothers and sisters, well, if that is the way he treated the teachers, I guess they're not his brothers and sisters. <sighs> Donna says, yes, I hear the minister loud and clear that ministers living on Lala Island where everyone is living in Wonderland. Benedict Cador says, could we remove the taxes as our payment to Liat? And finally, Margaret says, I agree about the taxes. I don't think you can get rid of them altogether. Nobody's asking them to, Mags. Nobody. Uh, but they can be dramatically reduced. Absolutely, girl. You should be in government. Please, folks, take a break here. We'll come back. We still have two more pieces. Ooh, yo, yo, running out of time. Still have two more pieces for you. Are you equipped to take a closer look behind the numbers? The Caribbean Institute of Forensic Accounting can help you build your professional skills to audit and investigate fraud, waste, and abuse. Through the Forensic Certified Public Accountants FCPA program, you gain qualification to conduct forensic audits and investigations globally, earn international recognition and designation as a Forensic Certified Public Accountant from the Forensic CPA Society of the USA. Certificate courses run May to November 2019 in Grenada at the Grenada National Stadium. To register, contact us at info at cfa edu.com or 868-224-3478. Boyo, they got fly with kite now. The wind picking up. I'm coming, I'm coming. Kaim, what are you doing? Fly my kite. Yeah, but not here. You can't fly kite near power lines, boy. Why not? The wind good. Because mommy say, kite treads conduct electricity. Yeah, kite. It's right. If your kite gets stuck in power lines, you can cause power outages, or even worse, you can get shot. Come, let's go and fly them in the pasture. Yeah, that makes sense.
kite threads conduct electricity. Do not fly kites near overhead power lines. This can lead to electric shocks and power outages. If your kite gets stuck in power lines, do not try to retrieve it. Release it and call Grenlec. Always fly kites in open areas. Keep your kites far away from roads. And remember, always clean up after yourself. Grenlec, energizing our Grenada. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates, 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and their 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. All righty, folks. A Grenadian businessman, broadcaster in New York, John Crow Alexander, made his second visit to Sundays with George Grant yesterday and described some of the assistance he's providing to Grenada. Why he's doing it and some of the challenges faced, including how to handle the payment of duties when that assistance arrives in Grenada. Check this out. Um, the programs, uh, I'm involved with a couple of things, um, that both, both two of which are directly, directly, directly relating to Grenada. And the young lady who you just had on um, is typical or typifies the kind of work that I'm involved with in constantly trying to bring services um, to Grenada, to Grenadians. Um, the, the, it's unfortunate that the people who are, again, remember last time I mentioned the gatekeepers, people who are at the, and holding the gate, um, um, in many cases don't recognize or realize um, how much harm they're doing by not doing anything and or not trying to do anything. Um, um, I know we have limited resources. We are a very small country for the most part and um, somebody says we have money. Yes, we have money, but the people in charge are not totally or they seem to not totally aware of some of the acute little areas of need. So one of the reasons why I got involved with right now the collection of items that will be distributed to the 14 nursing homes we have in Grenada. I'm collecting um, um, sheets, wipes, um, beds, hospital beds, I should say, um, um, walkers. As a matter of fact, when I was on the last time, a young man, a viewer from your, from your audience, reached out to me and saying to me that he's, the walker that he has is in, in dilapidated state and um, can I get him a, a walker? So that I, I put an extra effort out there. As a matter of fact, last night on my way home, um, someone threw out a walker and it was in, sitting in the garbage. I went in the garbage and I took it out of the garbage and it was a brand new, apparently they, they got it and they probably used it one time because all of the wrappings and so forth was still on it. Um, and uh, sometimes people call me up, I go to their homes, pick up whatever it is that they're offering me. So we need help. And I mean, yes, we can curse the darkness, but where I come from, we prefer to light a candle. Um, there's a young lady from Atlanta who is also trying to do the same, same. thing, um, um, Yvonne James. I think she's on the, on the program this morning, I think I heard her name mention. Um, she too is trying to do some work in the area of the hearing impaired and there are a lot of our children who have speech impediments and have hearing problems and so she's trying to bring um, some awareness to that area and some services to that area again the people who are in the gate standing at the at the doorway for the most part are always seems to be the problem of how much they allow in when they allow it in and those kinds of things um, the other piece that I working, I'm working on is with Dr. Dragon. He's involved with this. 
the group, um, I sent you a video tip the last time uh, introducing myself yeah. to you and what I do. Yeah. Um, so the team from Hero, which is Health and Education Relief Organization, um, there's a team on this way to Grenada um, on the date. I have dates here. Um, Friday, June 7th to Sunday, June 9th. And they are coming in to do another seven uh, fistula operations where they're going to be um, working with patients who are dialysis uh, patients and to implant fistulas in uh, fistula, I was corrected, um, of, of air, um, fistula uh, uh, into their arms or wherever that they can find the necessary um, um, areas. Um, to implant these fistulas in these seven patients in order for them to be able to uh, receive dialysis. Uh, the dialysis much, with, with much ease. Mm -hmm. In a nutshell, I mean, that's, that's basically the two things that I'm uh, uh, involved with on a you know, one-on-one -on -one basis. Grenada is a place where we have a thing called, two things we have. We have Susu and we have Maroons at least when we used to have um, that before, right? And I grew up in that environment. So I, having, I'm had, to, I had to plant a, a, a patch of land and I go put on some peas. You know, when I, when I harvest the peas, everybody who helped me plant that peas, they get a, they get a little bowl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're happy with that. That's, that's, that's how I grew up. You know, I'm, I'm moving my house. So everybody in the village come to help me move my house. Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, and, it's, and we feed everybody, and that is the community that I know. So what I'm doing here is not something far-fetched, not something that is coming out, coming out of the sky someplace. This, this is what we do. Yeah. We help each other when we can. Um, and this is what is really frustrating for me, are the people who are sitting at the gate and, and, and are, are, are taking the, the sweet time. Like, you know... Yes, you have a job today. Next week, you might not have a job. Next week, you might be walking into that office, you know, begging for some services. And, and, and I don't think enough of us understand that. All, you need, all that has to happen is a little, just a little bit of a, 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 a fever. And all of what you have goes, in, goes up in smoke. I have, a young I have a friend of mine right now who happens to be a family member, which I didn't know that she was a family member who is in California, just diagnosed with cancer. You know, she's, you know, vibrant and, and living her life and living it to the fullest. And all of a sudden, boom, she comes down, cancer stri strikes her. Okay? No, she is the kind of a person who also very, very helpful. I mean, I can't call her name just yet. But, you know, we, have to, we don't think. We, we do not think tomorrow is another day. And we have to... This, the, what we do today, the services that we render to each other today is our rent. Somebody said this a while back. This is the rent that we pay for living on this planet. So we have to help each other whenever we can. It's not about yourself and your, how much money you have and how much houses you have and how much boats you can buy and how much you know, fishing rods and how much you know, golf clubs and all of that good stuff. No. You know, you, you, you have to help people. And you, first of all, Osmond Lewis says, thank you, John, for helping the people out of Grenada. But there's also a comment here from Anthony Howard. He says, one of the problems he's encountered in donating items to institutions in Grenada is having to pay duties on donations. More information is needed from government to prevent this from happening. I see you nodding your head. What say you, sir? Okay. A lot of people run into problems with that issue. Um, I, would, I, would, I would couch it this way. If you want to make a donation of any kind to the country or to an organization, um, there is a process. And whether it be health-related, health whether it be police-related, whatever the area that you're looking to make the donation, make contact first with the organization or the ministry or the unit and get some basic information from them. S step two, um, in terms of getting quote-unquote concessions, um, have the local person on the ground speak to the ministry that of, of, of that particular type of um, um, items that you're looking to donate. Okay. Uh, if you go through those channels, you will have less resistance. doesn't say that you're not going to have any, 
but the, the resistance, you're breaking down the barriers. Many people say, well, okay, I, I want to send home an ambulance. I'll use a big one. And they just simply send the ambulance home. When that ambulance gets to Grenada, the docks, the, the Port Authority people, now are in quandary because who is this ambulance for? Who is it coming from? Etc. Etc. And there's no paperwork anywhere. So now they have to go run around items that trying to figure to out okay. how to clear it off uh, of the, of, of the, um, the docks. It's not simply saying, well, we have an ambulance, we're glad to get the ambulance, and so hospitals come and take it. It's not that simple. So there are steps and processes in place in order for these things to happen. Um, um, if this guy wants to reach out to me, I can walk, walk him through the steps. Um, but mainly is a matter of making contact specifically with a particular uh, ministry, uh, the department, the perm and knowing who the permanent secretary is, um, and I would say developing the kind of relationship. Uh, Hero was able to get in there. It, it took us a good little long time in order to, to make this part happen. We've been trying to, as simple as, <laughs> as simple as this might seem, the same hero organization have been trying to get them to have a bigger team, team come into Grenada, Grenada and do more of the more of the work that they normally do. Okay. And even that, with all, we already have a foot in the door, and you will think that is easy <laughs> because we're already in. Yeah. But even with the foot in the door, we're still having to struggle to bring a, a bring in a larger expanded team in. You know, John, um, that is so sad, and I, I can uh, relate to what you're saying because I know that there are others before you have, who have tried yes. and have become so frustrated, they've just gone, taken yeah. off. Thank you very much, John Crow. There's not much more to be said. Uh, I think he said it all. Programs, we're running out of time, but uh, just before um we say goodbye i still have one more piece to run by you and we're going to do that right after we take this quick little break here juve chocolates cocoa nibs and cocoa balls from diamond estate grenada are now available at amazon.com amazon.ca amazon.co.uk and grenadamarket.com try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates 75 percent dark and rich 100 percent pure cocoa and their 60 percent dark and sweet chocolate bars today amazon prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the usa canada and europe grenadamarket.com when you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. I'm always on the move. Training. Traveling. Competing. So it's good to know I have Quad Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank. And there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. Welcome home. A young mother of two children with disabilities has taken to social media to raise an awareness of the lack of services for such persons. Sherdeen Thomas explained her circumstances and concerns about the prevailing system and was joined by prominent advocate for persons with disabilities, John Rello. Right now, I'd like to run by you a couple of excerpts from yesterday's program. I went to social media because I felt that I was the system has been failing my children in to the point of which I become frustrated so I took the social media to s raise the, out the attention of persons as to my situation and pro uh, I'm sure other situation here in Grenada. Um, what is the system that is set right now for persons with disabilities is disappointing to the fact that my son is 10 and has never been to school, not, f through, not from effort, not from me not making the effort. It's because 
to me, the Ministry of Education has not seen it important for him to be in school. I see that as disappointing on their part because education is a right for all and they feel in my son in that regard. Okay, you mentioned the two youngsters with disabilities. Could you tell us what those disabilities are? Yeah, my daughter, she has a, dis um, a developmental delay, meaning that she's 12, but she's not yet at a 12-year-old level. Um, she also has a, a speech impairment that where she can, um, her speech is not to the best. And what about your son? My son is autistic. He's never been properly, proper, properly diagnosed, but through research and through observation um, from myself and my family, we determined that he is autistic. Okay, but that determination was not professionally made. It was made by you and your family? Yes. Well, based on research and observation with my son, because there is no one on island to actually diagnose autism. There's no specialist or anything, so I, there's no way where I could go to probably diagnose him to know how far on the spectrum he is. Uh, so that's... Did, you, did you check with the Ministry of Health? The, not the Ministry of Health, but um, through the Council for Disabled, they sought observation with my son. Person because there is no the one to diagnose my son, but there is no doctor on island to actually diagnose. So. And you have been told that officially there is no doctor on island. You've heard that either from the ministry or from not, maybe from a not, doctor. Not the ministry, but I've also been in contact with the Autistic Foundation, and they are right now in. I spoke. I've been back and forth with the the person in the Autistic Foundation and she is right now trying to speak to SGU and see if a specialist could be available to probably diagnose persons. But as of right now, to my knowledge, there's no actual specialist to diagnose autism. Okay, so when you, you have these problems with your youngsters and you, you approach the Ministry of Health, what was the reaction? I didn't approach the Ministry of Health, I approached Social Development and well, the Ministry uh, of Well, Social Development is the Ministry, well, sorry, sorry, yes, okay, yeah, but it is the government, right? Yes, okay. I approached the Ministry of Education and the Ministry for Social Development. Um, in the... I um, approached the Ministry of Education for my son to, because there's a school for special education. So seeing that my child had a special need, I approached them um, to find out what exactly is needed so he could go to school. Because I explained to them the situation with them, meaning that he was not potty trained, etc. There's a special education desk at the ministry um, headed by Ms. St. John John. So I've been speaking to her concerning my son going to school. That was since he was three years. Um, there was not a caregiver at the school to deal with um, a child like my son. So they told me that one needs to be employed so they could be down there to deal with my son seeing that he is not yet potty trained. Point I'm going to get getting at here, Citizen Grant, regardless, it is the duty of the state not to do everything for us, mm -hmm. but at least to create the conditions. And not by their own whims and fancies or because of the political persuasion. It is as established by international convention. The Irish Aristocracy, the uncaring, irresponsible aristocracy that rules this country chooses not to pay attention to the people of this country, totally disregarding and spitting in the face of international law mm -hmm. and convention. And this is what I despise, Citizen Grant. And this is the reason why I came here this morning. 
particularly to talk about this and to challenge them. The most I can do is to challenge them. Total disrespect. I call it scornful disdain how they treat us as a community in this country. For instance, my son ended up in hospital. Um, because he's not accustomed to the, the, the area or the place, he would act up. The, the nurses aren't trained, they're not accustomed to dealing with somebody like so they had, had no idea how to deal with him. He had to be restrained. There wasn't even restraints for him. They had they use bandages to just tie like the bandages you have a spray on. That is what they used to tie his hands. I came and saw that and I was it hurt me to know that even a hospital doesn't have the relevant equipment to deal with persons like my son and like persons that act up children like my son. There is nothing they with with that I, I see it like they should have provisions whereby I'm s I should be with him knowing that the type of child I have, I should be able to stay with him. There's not no provisions in place for that. So I had to leave him in the care of them who don't understand him and in the in the situation where he they don't even have the proper restraints and stuff. So I had to leave leave him in that situation and it hurt me to know that a hospital has not no provisions in place for persons like my son. So I saw that as a failure on their part just the same. I'm not standing in defense of the government because I mean there's there are a lot of complaints all over the place about the quality of health care we have in Grenada. But let me ask you this GR to be fair, could a lot of this be just because we simply do not have the resources? Or is that coupled with an attitude? They're all coupled. They're, they're all joint, Citizen Grand. They're all joint. Listen, we train our people. You, you go to the universities around and so on. You ask questions. Everybody wants to be lawyers, doctors, engineers. But there are other professional, ancillary professionals related to health and so on that we need to train our people in. Just imagine yes. today. 2019, we don't have people trained to deal with autist and autistic um, part of our population, a part of the population that is autistic, and other things. Yes, and we other need things. to. It's deficiency, and it's because of one you mentioned attitude. I don't believe that we don't really have the so-called resources. resources. I don't believe that. It's an attitude, and it's an aristocratic attitude that has been passed through the colonial system to us, that when a person has an illness of such nature, they call shut-ins and they're abandoned. Mm -hmm. This is colonialism in its truest form. So that it pains me. I want you to tackle this because there are a couple of comments that have, uh, quite a few comments that have been showing up in social media. First of all, a little while ago, she talked about uh, her child being restrained. Margaret Francis, who works in the healthcare system in New York, she is saying here, restrained, tying hands? That is a criminal That act. is abuse. That's a criminal act. Okay, now hold on a minute. This is the end there. Um, Carla Clement says, legally, you're not allowed to restrain anyone. Jackie O says, yes, indeed. As a healthcare worker, we cannot restrain a patient. That is abuse and a safety concern. Mm -hmm. Well, he let, was. Hold on, let me hear, let me hear what John has to say. Yeah, well, indeed, George, listen, this thing goes all back, goes back to the fact that the state, ah, I retract that word, the aristocracy that rules Grenada is totally non-compliant with the United Nations Convention. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, disrespectful to the people of Grenada, totally disrespectful, I call to choose it, to, to call it, scornful disdain the way they treat people like now from the time this um convention has been set up for immediate i repeat immediate implementation 2008 george 11 years now had we started to do something to bring about the discussion no. on it the sister r r raised the issue of awareness how many Grenadians know that this convention exists 
Article 4 of the Convention, you must have read it, sister. Article 4 is very carefully, has very carefully outlined the states, they call it state parties, the responsibility and responsibilities and obligations of the state parties. It said state parties shall do this, shall, shall. do that, shall, mm -hmm. citizen grant, obligatory mm -hmm. when the word shall in, in law is used. We don't do anything. And we set up a pseudo philanthropic organization whose patrons the governor general to make the office of the governor general look good and make but they are not concerned about guaranteeing the the rights of people with disabilities no. Alrighty, folks that's just about gonna do it as we continue our quest for good governance that's going to bring us to the end of today's program. I thank you so much for allowing me ooh, 16 minutes over time. But before I go, as always, most important part of this program, some inspirational words. And today they come to you from the book of Psalms, Psalm 33, 18 and 19. See, the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him. Upon those whose hope, who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death and preserve them in spite of famine. Earl Joseph Maitland, I see that you're just showing up. You're kind of late, but check it out. It's going to be up on Facebook in about five minutes or so. Um, thanks a lot for joining us, folks. May the good Lord bless and keep you. By his grace, let's get together again tomorrow morning. Okay? <laughs>